Group 17 consists of fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and astatine. The elements in group 17 are also known as halogens. Group 17 elements are reactive nonmetals. Halogens are found on the Earth's crust in the form of salts called metal halides such as sodium chloride or rock salt. Halogens are poisonous if used in excessive amount. Always be extra careful when dealing with halogens. Look at the electrons arrangement of chlorine, bromine and iodine. From the electron arrangement of fluorine, bromine and iodine, we can see that the valence electron for elements in group 17 is 7. The physical properties of halogens. Group 17 elements are poor conductor of electricity. Group 17 elements are poor conductor of heat because they are made up of covalent bonds. Halogens have low melting points and boiling points because their molecules are low in density and they are attracted to each other by weak forces. Physical properties of halogens when moving down the group. The number of proton and electron increases as we move down group 17. The atomic size increases as we move down group 17, raising the level of density. The melting and boiling points increase because intermolecular van der Waals forces increase with the increase in molecular size. The physical state of the halogens changes gradually from gas to liquid and finally to solid. The color of the three halogens also gradually changes from light to dark. Let us now find out how chlorine reacts with water. Click on chlorine. Chlorine gas is produced by the reaction of concentrated hydrochloric acid with potassium manganate 7. Click on the wash bottle of distilled water. Now click on the test tube. Click on the piece of blue litmus paper. Observe what happens to the litmus paper when it comes in contact with the solution formed. The blue litmus paper first turns red. What can you deduce from this observation? The solution formed is acidic. The litmus paper then turns from red to white. What can you deduce from this observation? The solution formed has bleaching properties. Chlorine reacts with water to form two acids, hydrochloric acid and hypochlorous acid. The hypochlorous acid has bleaching properties. Let us now find out how bromine reacts with water. Click on the wash bottle of distilled water. Now, click on the test tube. Click on the bottle of liquid bromine. Click on the piece of blue litmus paper. 
observe what happens to the litmus paper when it comes in contact with the solution formed. The blue litmus paper first turns red. What can you deduce from this observation? An acidic solution is formed. The litmus paper then turns from red to white. What can you deduce from this observation? The solution formed turns the litmus paper white. It has bleaching properties as well. Bromine reacts with water to form two acids, hydrobromic acid and hypobromous acid. The hypobromous acid has bleaching properties. Let us now find out how iodine reacts with water. Click on the wash bottle of distilled water. Now, click on the test tube. Click on the spatula. Click on the stopper. Click on the piece of blue litmus paper. Observe what happens to the litmus paper when it comes in contact with the solution formed. The solution formed turns blue litmus paper red. What can you deduce from this observation? An acidic solution is formed. Iodine is only slightly soluble in water. It reacts with water to form small amounts of two acids, hydroiodic acid and hypoiodose acid. Let us now find out how chlorine reacts with sodium hydroxide. Click on chlorine. Chlorine gas is produced by the reaction of concentrated hydrochloric acid with potassium manganate 7. Click on the bottle of sodium hydroxide solution. Click on the test tube. Now, click on the bottle of concentrated hydrochloric acid. Click on the stopper. A colorless solution is formed. Chlorine reacts with sodium hydroxide to form sodium chloride, sodium chlorate 1 and water. Let us now find out how bromine reacts with sodium hydroxide. Click on bromine. Click on the bottle of sodium hydroxide solution. Click on the test tube. Now click on the bottle of bromine liquid. Click on the stopper. A colorless solution is formed. Bromine reacts with sodium hydroxide to form sodium bromide, sodium bromate 1 and water. Let us find out how iodine reacts with sodium hydroxide. Click on iodine. 
Click on the bottle of sodium hydroxide solution. Click on the test tube. Now click on the bottle of iodine. Click on the stopper. A colorless solution is formed. Iodine reacts with sodium hydroxide to form sodium iodide, sodium iodate 1 and water. Let us now find out how chlorine reacts with hot iron. Click on chlorine. Click on the Bunsen burner. Click on the bottle of concentrated hydrochloric acid. A brown solid is formed. Chlorine reacts with hot iron to form iron 3 chloride. Let us now find out how bromine reacts with hot iron. Click on bromine. Click on the Bunsen burner beneath the combustion tube. Click on the Bunsen burner beneath the test tube of bromine. A brown solid is formed. Bromine reacts with hot iron to form iron 3 bromide. Let us now find out how iodine reacts with hot iron. Click on iodine. Click on the Bunsen burner beneath the combustion tube. Click on the Bunsen burner beneath the test tube of iodine. A brown solid is formed. Iodine reacts with hot iron to form iron 3 iodide. Click on the blinking button to proceed. Let us look at the way chlorine, bromine and iodine react with iron once again. Click start and observe what happens to the heated iron wool as the halogens are passed over it. What can you deduce about the reactivity of the elements of group 17? The elements of group 17 get less reactive as we go down the group. Why does the reactivity of the halogens decrease as we go down the group? Let us look at the electron arrangement of the halogens to help us figure out the answer. The number of occupied electron shells increases down the group. The atomic radius also increases down the group. Now, let us find out why chlorine is less reactive than fluorine. When a halogen atom reacts, it attracts an electron into its valence shell in order to achieve a stable octet electron arrangement. The chlorine atom is less able to attract the incoming electron into its valence shell than the fluorine atom. Can you figure out why?
the forces of attraction between the nucleus of the chlorine atom and the valence electrons are weaker than that in the fluorine atom. This is because the valence electrons are further away from the nucleus. The valence electrons of chlorine are also shielded from the nuclear attraction by more inner shells than the valence electrons of fluorine. We can now explain the decrease in chemical reactivity of the halogens down the group as follows. The atomic size of the halogens increases down the group. The valence electrons are also shielded from the nuclear attraction by more electrons in the inner shells. The forces of attraction between the nucleus and the valence of electrons become weaker. Thus, the ability of the atom to accept an electron into its valence shells decrease. Hence, the reactivity of the halogens decreases down the group. You have now learnt that although halogens have similar chemical properties, there is an obvious trend in their chemical reactivity as we go down the group. The experiments that you have conducted are based on the reactions of chlorine, bromine and iodine. Fluorine is not normally used in the school laboratory as it is a poisonous and corrosive gas and it reacts violently with certain chemicals. Astatine is also not used in the school laboratory as it is an unstable element that is radioactive. Astatine does not occur naturally. Halogens can be hazardous to health. Fluorine and chlorine gases are poisonous. Inhalation of fluorine <laughs> gas causes nose and throat irritation, respiratory tract and lung injury, unconsciousness and even death. These gases are extremely irritating to the skin or eyes and may cause severe burns in humans. Bromine gas, when inhaled, may cause long-term lung problems. <laughs> its vapor irritates the eyes and throat. Bromine burns the skin and produces painful sores. Astatine gives out harmful radiation which can cause damage to cells. What safety measures and precautions should you take when carrying out experiments involving halogens? Discuss with your friends. When carrying out experiments dealing with halogens, Wear safety masks and gloves. You should conduct these experiments in the fume cupboard. Try to avoid inhaling any of the gases. You should also take care to use only a small amount of chemicals for the experiments. Click on the blinking button to proceed.